Um, so I was really curious about this gear steamer fight in uh, Bloodlines, and I decided to look into it tonight for a bit. Um, I'm just gonna play through uh, the the strategy that I I made up here. For those who don't want to see all of it, um, this kills him in I guess what I would call one cycle. It kills him before his big like explosion and big jump, um, where you normally can't hit him. You would normally jump off screen there, and it, it costs a bunch of time. Um, but this strat kills him before that. So. Um, the main thing is that I hit him twice with whip swings, uh, and that that cuts off exactly one uh, one whip. So I open the fight with a swing and hit him like on the frame that he forms. You don't really waste any time uh, setting it up, and you don't incur too many lag frames. And then I hit him once with a swing here, uh, without really losing the the, uh, the stun lock timing and without, again, incurring a bunch of lag frames. Um, because whip swings are a little bit ambiguous here, I'm just going to quickly talk through uh, the, the timings of releases and what I'm holding. Um, so to open it, he, like, spins around screen and slowly coalesces on this side. Um, I line up as far as I can next to this girder, but it's not super important. You can you can be as far forward as, like, Morris's knee being on this brown wooden scaffolding. Um, but I find that uh, the farther right you are, the easier it is for the follow-up whips. So I wait to jump until he's fully formed and faces the camera. So right here, um, after I see this, I, I try to delay a few frames and then jump. Um, if you jump right when he forms, you're going to be earlier and your swing's not going to hit him. So I try and delay a little bit. Um, and then... I just hold... I'm actually holding right during this swing. It doesn't matter if you're holding left or right during a swing, as long as it's not up or down. Those change the length of the whip. Um, so all I'm doing is holding right, and then I'm releasing Y the moment that I hit him. Do, do, do. Bonk. So I release Y here, and since I'm holding right, Morris is automatically going to turn around, and then I'm just going to do a falling whip. Bonk. Um, for all of these, if you if you roll, jump to whip, you're going to whip over the top of him, because his, his hitbox is a little bit low. Um, so you have to kind of do, like, delayed taps, jump, whip, jump, whip, jump, whip, instead of jump, whip, jump, whip. Um, and I'm just watching Morris's feet for when he lands. It's really important, in order to get uh, four hits here, to jump, like, as soon as possible. You need to cancel these whips really early. So there's the falling whip, and then you do two more. Two more neutral, and then um, the last one is going to be an up whip. So there's one, two, three, up. Um, this is usually where it fails. If those if those aren't really tight, then when he jumps, he's going to hit you, and then the run's over. Um, so that's the hardest part, this opening. Just making sure that your, your first swing uh, hits him early enough that you have time for those hits, and that you cancel your, uh, your jump whips in time. One, two, three, up whip. And then for this, I line up Morris um, roughly so that the right side of his body is in line with this part of the scaffolding. This is like super flexible. There's, I don't know, five or ten pixel window. Um, if you're too far left when you do the retreating whips, you're not going to get a good swing over here. Uh, and if you're too far right, then your standing whips aren't going to hit him. But for this, you just uh, take this time when he's off screen to line yourself up. Do an up left whip as he's falling, and then five grounded whips. One, two, three, four, five. Um, he's gonna hover and go across screen, so there's uh, four jump whips that you do here. The first two you can do neutral, and you can roll jump to whip because his hitbox is high. Uh, you don't have to do like the delayed tap like before, so you do two of those. One, two, and then you do two delayed whips or two uh, reverse retreating whips. So jump right, turn left, whip. And then, um, bonk. You just have to trust that it's going to hit. It's scary. Um, and then once he explodes, you're really not going to take damage. You do it again, except this time, uh, you do an up left whip. I don't really know where his hitbox is here. I guess it's the entire screen. Um, and during this, I hold, um, I hold up left during this swing. And again, I want to release Y the moment that, 
uh, the moment that we hit the center. So we start a swing, I'm holding up left, it hits him, I release now. Um, and you get like this weird slingshot thing, because you're going to release inside this, and it's going to like eject you this way, and then you're going to slingshot back. Um, and then all you do here, uh, you're going to be holding right, you do a uh, whip swing on the way down to hit him on the way down, and then he's going to be lying flat on the ground, and you just finish with two whips. One, one, two. Um, the only thing about this is that when you release, depending on, uh, how soon, depending on how soon you release after you, uh, after you hit him, you sometimes have extra height. So, uh, it's best to delay your falling whip. Um, you can, you can whip, like, really, really late if you want, because you can just cancel it once you're on the ground for the, the two grounded swings. Um, the important thing is that you don't do it too soon and whip over the top of him, because then, then you'll miss. So, again, wait until he's stationary, do a whip, hold right, release once you hit him. One, two, three, get in position. This, one, two, three, four, five, two neutral, two retreating. Release again when you hit him, and then two on the ground. Um, and skipping that big jump uh, saves about four seconds, it looks like. Um, and it, it's really not, it's really not too bad once, uh... Once you get used to the opening. So. That's that. That's the best I could do.